Welcome to this video on the automatic fading kitchen lights which use an Arduino to control the fading and a passive infrared sensor to detect motion. When I would move into the kitchen right now the lights fade smoothly on because the PIF sensor detected my motion. Um, there, this is one of the states, the three states of the lighting. Uh, the state that the sensor is active, so if I would move away after a certain amount of time, the LEDs will uh, fade off again. I can overrule the sensor and go to another state, the always on state, by pressing the rotary encoder that is built here under the cabinets. It will fade to another brightness level, which is uh, totally adjustable, so it could be the same brightness level. I'm now rotating the knob so you can see that I can fade to any level that I would like for this always on state. And another short press brings me back to the motion detection state. Of course I can also go to the completely off state. That is a long press, a two seconds press and I'm doing that now and now the lights will dim to totally off status. Well, that's about it. The, these three states are all that I need. It was fun to build and if you would like to build your own, uh, please keep watching because there is a little bit more explanation of what you need and how to connect it all. Um, I moved away from the sensor now, so if we would wait, uh, I think it, I, I have set it to 20 seconds. So soon we will see the lights fade off. The parts needed, an Arduino, a LED strip uh, and some, some, some other parts, uh, they will set you back uh, uh, the small amount of I think around $15 or something like that. It is really cheap and of course it preserves a little energy. Uh, there it is off now. So let's see how it is done. These are the schematics. I bought this uh, LED strip 5 meter with a power adapter, 12 volt. And if you don't want to cut off the nice connector, you could use this uh, terminal, screw terminal connector as an intermediate. The 12 volt feeds the Arduino via the V-in terminal and also the power FET module via the V-in. Uh, all the grounds uh, also of the 5 volt and the 12 volt are uh, interconnected and the Arduino serves with its 5 volt terminal uh, to supply the rotary encoder, the pair sensor and the logic circuit of the FET with the 5 volt. It's all quite straightforward. Let's go to the picture, the actual picture of what is underneath my kitchen cabinets. I mounted all the components on a small wooden plate and screwed that to the underside of my kitchen cabinet. I pulled off a nice knob of an old amplifier I had somewhere. And here we can see the LED strip. Uh, I did not use an Arduino Uno, but in this case I used a Nano, but of course that, that all stays the same uh, software-wise. Um, oops, what happened? That was wrong. Oh yeah, and the, 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 the peer sensor needs a little adjustment. There's a jumper uh, that needs to be placed just where it is not on this picture, just on the other side to continuously re-trigger. And then you can adjust this rotary potentiometer to uh, adjust the sensitivity to your liking. And this one is the timer pot meter and uh, I rotated that fully counterclockwise to get the shortest amount of stay on time because we want the Arduino to control the stay on time. And this is the state transition diagram. If we start the system up, uh, the LEDs are off and also the sensor is off, so nothing is happening until we do a short press of the rotary encoder switch. That brings us to this state where the LEDs fade on to a certain brightness, which is adjustable. And the peer sensor is now active, which means if there is no movement for a certain amount of seconds, the LEDs will fade off 
and if the per sensor senses movement again then the LEDs will fade on. We can overrule the sensor uh, by a short press that brings us to this state where there is uh, uh, possibly another brightness. The two brightnesses are both uh, adjustable but the peer sensor is now off so it means the LEDs stay continuously on until I do a short press again which switches the use of the sensor on. A long press will bring us back to uh, the power off state no matter if I came from the sensor state or the no sensor state a long press turns it off. Well, that was it. The the software. Oh yeah, let's have a small look at the software. There is a certain amount of configuration that can be done. Um, over here we have uh, the stay on time that is at currently at 20 seconds. That's the time that the let's stay on if there is no movement. And then uh, we have a short press and a long press definition that you can put yourself to your liking. We have the fade interval, which means how fast the LEDs fade from on to off state. Um, uh, the, the smaller number means faster fading, so you can experiment a little bit, bit with this until you have uh, what you like. Then we have two brightnesses for the, the, the always on state and for the sensor active state. Uh, these are just the initial ones uh, because when you rotate the encoder the brightness will be stored in EEPROM so uh, from here on uh, all the time uh, the state, the brightnesses that you last used are the ones that it will use when it powers on again. Uh, let's not have a look at the complete software, it can be downloaded from the link. Uh, well, I, I just wish you a lot of fun building this. Maybe see you back in a future video. Bye bye.